What would you demand of Jesus to make, to make him obey you in such a way that if he does what you ask, you'll believe in him. If you have faith in Jesus, then he's already done enough. Just his name alone, just the transformative power of the Holy Spirit in your life alone is enough. You just believe in faith because Jesus alone is the fulfillment of the law and the prophets and everything that was prophesied in the Old Testament. Everything that Moses wrote is fulfilled in Jesus. And so you believe and are saved. But the people who saw Jesus face to face, some of his, some of his biggest critics, and even some of the people who ate the food that he miraculously produced still wanted more. Okay, just on the heels of the miraculous feeding of the 5,000 comes this question, okay, now what are you gonna do to prove that you're Lord? You see this? In John chapter five, verse 30, uh, John chapter six, verse 30, sorry. What sign then are you going to do so that we may see and believe you, they asked. What are you going to perform? Our ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, just as it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. The fact that this comes the day after the miraculous feeding of the 5,000 has to be the ultimate like bang your head against the wall experience for the disciples who, are just, who see the whole thing go down. He just miraculously fed a stadium load of people and now they're asking him, okay, so what sign are you gonna perform? Here's the thing, when your faith is dependent upon signs and wonders, no number of signs will ever be sufficient for you. No number of wonders will ever be sufficient for you. You'll ever demand increasingly, uh, increasingly more signs upon signs, upon miracles, upon wonders, upon signs. There was no group of people who ever saw more physics-defying miracles than ancient Old Testament Israel during the Exodus. And there's also no people who were more notoriously back and forth in their faithfulness to God than Old Testament Israel. And Moses would turn his back for one moment and go up Mount Sinai and they'd be back down to the bottom of the mountain worshiping something they made out of their own gold jewelry. These people saw physics defied over and over again and yet they craved more and more. It is faithful to ask God for a miracle. I do believe that God performs miracles, but I think it takes greater faith to believe when you ask God for a miracle and he doesn't provide it, and then to ask him for another miracle after that. He's able to provide miracles, but those are not the basis for our faith. Rather, they're a byproduct. Were these miracles the basis for our faith, our faith wouldn't be faith at all. If you ask God to manifest something in your hand, God, manifest a million bucks in my hand right now, or you don't exist. Okay, there's not a million bucks in my hand, therefore God doesn't exist. Right, this is a huge non sequitur. Because God didn't put a million dollars in my hand, he doesn't exist. Like God's existence was not contingent upon his obedience to me anyway. Moreover, if God has to obey you in order to exist, that makes you God, and God is your slave. It is non sequitur to say that if something obeys you, it exists, and if it disobeys you, it doesn't exist. My kids would have vanished into nothingness a long time ago if they have to obey you in order to exist. Okay, if you tell somebody, like, do what I say or you don't exist, that, that sounds like a threat, man. Here, God's just sitting here existing the whole time, watching you make these demands of him. His existence is not contingent upon his obedience to you. He is God. You and I are not. And so may our faith, may our faith be sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see, not rooted and dependent upon signs and wonders and miracles. Because if you demand these of God, you'll never be satisfied. You'll be craving constantly more upon more. Yes, God does work miracles, but those are not the basis of our faith. They are a byproduct. Let's look closely at the crowd here around Jesus, working miracles, and be honest in our own hearts which side of the crowd we stand on. The disciples who didn't fully understand Jesus all the time, or the crowd that was just there for the free food and now said, okay, what's your next trick, magician? Jesus is Lord. He is more than a miracle worker. Now go light up the darkness.